now we are going to look at couple of problems that can be encoded into a sad problem and using sad solver we can solve those problems namely we look at sudoku and bounded model checking let's first consider sudoku so you have seen sudoku uh, you have a grid given 9 by 9 grid and have some numbers are there and you have to fill the blank spaces such that in every column and every row uh, no letter uh, repeats also in every grid the no letter repeats so this is a one solution of the sudoku problem now let's suppose that we want to turn this into a sad problem how are we going to do it to do that uh, we need to declare variables as we have been doing for every problem so let's suppose declare a variable v for each ijk okay an ijk range from 1 to 9 so what is the meaning of these variables if this variable is 1 that means the column i and row j has k symbols okay and uh, when it's 0 that symbol is not there maybe some other symbol maybe no symbol well, that's what it means okay so uh, for each cell we need to have this constraint that exactly 1 k is 1 okay in every cell i and j you need to have exactly 1k for which vijk is true so that is encoded by summing this equals to 1 we have seen how to encode cardinality constraints so therefore we know how to encode these things let's look at every row okay so let's fix a row and in this row let's say row is jth row and uh, you want to think about uh, symbol k so in this whole row the symbol k should occur exactly one time so you iterate over all the columns and say that for the row j and symbol k the sum of these bits should be one that means that symbol must occur exactly one similarly you build the constraint for each column now you fix your i and the very j it will encode the similar thing now what is left to be encoded the box constraint the box constraints are similar to these constraints instead of talking about the whole row or whole column they are talking about this uh, nine boxes and there are nine such constraints so uh, it's slightly involved but you can take a look again okay, and carefully check these uh, indices it's amazing to see the symmetry in the whole problem okay? basic sanity check row constraints column constraints and box constraints are turned out to be exactly the same constraints you're solving and you put them together in a search solver and initialize with the known cells okay so it, it's this cell you have a nine is one so then you say okay uh, v i j nine at this for i j for this position is that bit is set to one and then you put all these constraints together and solve it get a satisfying assignment Let's look at another example of solving uh, practical problems using SAT solvers. Let's suppose you have a mini machine which takes said input in every cycle and produces an output in every cycle and it has internal state x and each time it processes an input and the last previous state and computes the next state which goes back to be processed uh, used again for the computation of the next state. Okay? So i is a vector of uh, variables representing input, o is a vector of variables representing output, x is a vector of variables representing current state, and x prime is the vector of variable representing the next state. So question is, after n steps, the machines always produce output o that satisfies some formula f o. Okay? So you want outputs to satisfy certain constraints. So what would be the SAT encoding? How, how you, this problem can be turned into a SAT problem? So what do you do uh, for every stage, every time point, there is a, you're getting a sample, right? Input sample. So I0, I1, I2, to all the way to IN minus one. And you are producing outputs O1, O2, O3, and different time points. So you just give them separate names. Okay? Just sub put a subscript on the variables and you get those names. And internal states also need to be represented, right? So you give them a variable x0, x1, x2, xn. These, these many variables are irrelevant in your now write down the clauses okay so encoding system runs okay so you basically you do you have a transition system for the system you encode okay first 
input variables and the first state uh, should uh, apply on a, tr a transition system and then produce the next one okay x101 okay then x101 goes in and then produces x202 and so on and so forth these constraints together should be encoding the runs of the your uh, system o1 and o2 or o n all these variables go in this property and say okay this does not hold okay if these two together gives you a sad problem okay then you have a bug like there is a way to execute that you can violate this property otherwise you your, pro your program is safe so let's look at an example it's very abstract we need to look at an example to truly understand it consider the following two bit counter okay? with two bits p and q uh, you have this uh, transformation every time point you uh, you negate p and q prime becomes p or not q the question is how many steps the above counter counts okay let us suppose if we claim that it is a mod 3 counter we can use a sad solver to find it so if somebody said okay it's a mod 3 counter is it the case or not you can ask the sad solver you know how do we encode that we uh, construct the following constraints in code a single transition so what is single transition if i give you pq it gives you p prime and q prime so you can write as p prime is equivalent to not p and q prime is equivalent to p or not q simple enough now i am going to do i will going to rename these variables in a way that i get, get these constraints transition which takes me from p0 to p1 q1 then p1 q1 to p2 q2 and the next clock cycle p3 q3 okay put the value of t in in this uh, symbolic uh, notation then you obtain this formula okay so you this formula any satisfying assignment here is a run of the your uh, system now what do we do Say, we write down the property okay the property is what it is saying that every three steps later the, you get a repeat right however you also want to say then in two steps uh, or, uh, or immediately after next step there is no repetition when you go from the current value p0 q0 to next value q, p1 q1 they should not be same okay? so you're saying the first step you get a distinct value then again you get a next step also p0 should be different from q2 p2 p2 q2 also be different with the P1, Q. when you reach to p3 q3 right they should be equal to p0 q0 that means it's it's a th mod 3 counter it, it it first it goes to three distinct states and then it follows the the first state again now what we will do we will call the sad solver and say okay can you give me satisfying assignment if there is a satisfying assignment of this uh, uh, satisfiability problem then you don't have a mod 3 counter yeah. otherwise uh, if it is unsaid then you have a mod 3 counter